how common is childhood obesity um, showing up with comorbidities like hypertension, fatty liver, metabolic syndrome? How related are those two things? So that's a wonderful question. So what you're asking is uh, how prevalent are the comorbidities of obesity in children? Um, over the years, it has become more prevalent. I've seen a lot of kids with high cholesterol or fatty liver disease. Um, I actually had a kindergartner with extremely high cholesterol that wasn't genetic because it was a kindergartner and it was like a first grade, two kids, same family. They both had very high cholesterol when I first screened them. I gave the mom the whole spill. We got to reduce the fat in the diet. We got to talk to nutritionists. One child was able to get it going down. The other child, it started creeping up. And I asked the mom, I said, so, you know, what are we doing differently in one child versus the other? And the mom was just like, I can't control. I can't control what that child is eating, but I can control what the other child is eating. So as a result, it's starting to go down. So um, I had never seen that before, but it's increasing. We're seeing more children with high cholesterol. We're seeing more children with high blood pressure, pre-diabetes, or even diabetes, as well as fatty liver disease. So it's increasing because we're having a lot more incidence of obesity, um, and all the things that kind of create that. And is the the prevalence of these comorbidities uh, similar among different ethnicities and socioeconomic statuses? Of course not. <laughs> um, so I think it just goes back to the idea of disparities. Childhood obesity is one of those that have a lot of factors that contribute to the development of it. And some of those are beyond the control of those that suffer from it, from food deserts to um, transportation to uh, not having a healthy place to walk or exercise. Uh, there are a lot of factors that contribute to it. But no, in general, when we talk about disparities, people of Hispanic and black backgrounds tend to suffer more with the condition than those that are white, as well as those that have lower socioeconomic status um, have a higher burden than those that have a higher socioeconomic status. How does that impact um, practice in areas um, where there are lower socioeconomic status or ethnic groups that are more likely to face um, these types of comorbidities? Um, how do those the treatments required for those two things overlap? So, again, this goes into the idea of what is a health disparity and what contributes to it. So I work in an area that is of low socioeconomic status. There are lots of challenges and barriers. So we put forth a very full-throated effort to alleviate and accommodate some of those things that can contribute to it. So do we need to get you access to the WIC? Or <laughs> do we need to get you access to WIC? Yes. In higher socioeconomic status, environments, clinics, they might not even think about WIC because they don't need any help with trying to get food. Do we have to make sure that you're connected with SNAP so you can get food coming in and actually have those benefits? So trying to alleviate some of those barriers can be beneficial. And then recognizing the cultural differences. Um, in an African-American community, I've seen lots of grandparents say, oh, that baby can eat solid foods at three months. And you're just like, let's bring granny in. Can you bring granny into the next appointment and we can have a conversation? And so just knowing what community you're working with and trying to alleviate those factors can be helpful.